Welcome back to News Geelong. Torquay is the winner as the Surfing Victoria Melbourne headquarters have been relocated to a far more appropriate new home, right next door to Surf World and close to Janjuk Beach. Ian Nichols found out more. Here we are on the surf coast in Torquay, new home of Surfing Victoria. We have really a big surfing precinct here. We're right next door to the winner's Surf World, of course, and just a stone's throw from the famous Janjuk and Bells Beach. We're talking with the Deputy Director of Surfing Victoria, Ali Harrison. It's been a long time coming. We've um, been based in Torquay pretty much since Surfing Victoria started, but um, we've never actually had a, an official home. So now we have a new home. We're close to Surf World, we're close to the surf companies and we're close to the beach, obviously. So yeah, it's a great place for uh, Surfing Victoria to be based. So it was actually interesting because we moved into the new office two weeks before the Rip Curl Pro actually began. So time-wise, it was a little bit hectic, but um, the event was great. It ran really well and the surf was fantastic. So it couldn't have been a better 50 years of Rip Curl Pro. But surfing is now a major sport, isn't it? It certainly is. And it's not just in Torquay, it's all across the coast. We've got programs that um, range from Mallacoota to Portland. So yeah, surfing is popular along the Victorian coastline everywhere. Are you finding it's much more functional to be here in un all under the one roof? Yeah, definitely. And it's good to have an official base as well. We've got uh, obviously a lot of equipment and everything we need to store as well for events. As surfing bit grows, the staff grows, the events grow. So yeah, it's important to have a, a home. So during the winter break, it really quietens down here. We've had a busy summer and a busy Easter. So now this is the time, well, the only time that the staff actually get to have a bit of a break. Surfing's definitely in the mainstream at the moment. Lane Beachley was on Dancing with the Stars I think last series or the series before. So yeah, he's certainly going to be a good character to watch on the show. Well, what's next? What's the next big event that we can look forward to? Um, probably the events start again in September. The Rip Curl Grom Search is probably our next big event. So, And then our pro participation based programs start as well. So pretty much we quieten down now for the winter while it's cold and then September we kick off again. So another busy summer ahead. At the brand new home of Surfing Victoria in Torquay, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thank you, Ian. Green It, Grow It is a project based in Corio designed to create sustainable gardens and green thumbs. Ali Dean found out more about Clover Blitz 2. I'm here today at the Cloverdale Community Centre for Clover Blitz 2, a food forest planting bonanza which will be educational and fun. I'm about to speak with some of the organisers and the volunteers down here at Cloverdale. Um, the Clover Blitz is it's part of a bigger project called Green It, Grow It and the aim of that project is to develop sustainable gardens and particularly edible gardens in the Corio area. So this is a project that's been going for about a year now. Um, the Clover Blitz which is what's happening today is our second one and we've got members of the community who are here to help plant our food forest which is just along the side of the centre. The first, part, first Clover Blitz planted the nature strip so that's got herbs growing on it now and the, today we're getting the food forest established. There's been some great people turning up and helping. And what are we aiming to achieve with the food forest? Uh, well the idea is it's um, a community food planting and uh, a food forest looks after itself a lot better than um, a garden which has everything kind of spaced apart and at a low level. So it's mimicking nature, having taller trees and shrubs and ground covers and that sort of thing so that uh, things are naturally shaded and don't need as much watering and they have exchanging things under the soil as well that we don't know about sometimes. Yeah. How's the day going along? Yeah, it, it's quite can be tiring. It's rewarding. I've been involved here about nine years. I work with Rosewell Neighbourhood Centre and the North Lane Centre. Uh, a bit of advice for anybody that's sitting around bored: get off it and get out and volunteer somewhere because it can be very, very rewarding. Oh, it's gone fantastic. We've had so many people turn up and put in their time, free time, and and volunteer to help make this the area around this uh, community centre edible. Because we're hopefully going to, I mean, if you've seen the area out the back, we're hopefully this can become the food bowl for Corio. And we've already planted up five fruit trees and fruit bushes. We've got herbs out the nat on the nature strip. We've got plants donated by the Friends of Geelong Botanic Gardens. Uh, we've got the herb garden behind you. So it's becoming a very productive area. And there's plans, I hear, to have a food swap here as well. So it's very exciting. Ellie Dean, News Geelong. Thank you, Ellie. 
The arts are well and truly alive at the Geelong Performing Arts Centre with the latest Alcoa theatre season offering Riverside Theatre's production of Rainbow's End. News Geelong was there. We're here at GPAC where the latest Alcoa theatre season show is Rainbow's End. It's on in the drama theatre and it runs tonight and a matinee tomorrow and tomorrow night. A wonderful moving story about three generations of Koori women and uh, it stars Christina Nu and we were able to speak with a couple of the cast, one of which who's just stepped into the role on the weekend and gave a flawless performance on opening night. So you can come along and see it at GPAC. Now, it must have been a scary moment, but also so challenging. Yeah, um, I mean, it certainly, I think, has improved on my <laughs> learning lines. <laughs> I know how to um, pick them up really quickly. So um, that's certainly a skill that we need to learn. So that's a really exciting thing that I never knew I could do. <laughs> All right, and you're with this wonderfully experienced cast in Christine Anu and Lillian Crombie and, of course, Garth as well, who's been on our Geelong stages before. Uh, Garth, you're the thorn amongst the roses here. You play several male parts, but the only boy in the cast. How's that? It's an honour, actually, being the only male in the cast. Um, you certainly learn how to fit in and play your part and be a support. Uh, and I guess that's what my role is in the show, really. And as you said, to play as many characters as I do is also a challenge. Um, slightly schizophrenic, <laughs> but uh, no, it's been great. It's, it's an honour. All right, so a little rundown, I guess, of the story of the play for people at home. Yep, yeah, it's uh, set in 1954 in the flats near Marupna. It's uh, basically a story about three generations of Aboriginal women. Um, living on the flats, living in a humpy, kind of dealing with the political and social issues of the time. This is News Geelong as we go to a break and return with sport and weather after this. Um.